one. Yeah, I'm ready. Yo, what's up, guys? We're back with another uh, way too early ranking. We're already getting, uh, we're already looking forward to the next uh, fantasy football year. This uh, this week, we're doing running backs. Uh, you know, arguably the you know the most important position in fantasy football. So it's going to be uh, this is going to be exciting for show. So uh, Liam, Jose, how y'all doing? Doing just fine. Right. Out here in the 305. Shailen, Shailen. Nice, nice. All right, well, let's hop right into it. So uh, uh, let's see. I guess I guess I can start. Um, so for my number one, uh, I start off with Dalvin. Uh, I just looked at like the like kind of like that group of like you know top tier running backs and like Kamara, CMC, Saquon. They've all had like their shine at at uh, RB one seasons. And I just kind of I just kind of went like went off of just like you know what like it's Dalvin's turn. Like he hasn't had like an official like RB one campaign. He got close last season, but uh, I was just like you know what I think it's his time. Uh, you know, they're still going to have Kirk. You still have Thielen, Jefferson, still going to be the same scheme. You know, they're going to be an okay team, uh, but they get to play some pretty, like, shitty run defenses in the uh, NFC North. So that, that was kind of my reasoning with Dalvin. And also just the fact, like, I don't know, like, it just feels like it's going to be his time. So that's what, who I have at, uh, at one. I'll start with, with uh, Lee on the sign. Who do you have at, at one and why? Yeah, so uh, one second, just give me a second to throw these up here. Uh, so, yeah, I got Chris McCaffrey at mine. I think Chris McCaffrey, you know, he's bound to break out this season. I mean, not break out. He's bound to go back to what he was playing as. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was putting up, like, R he was RB2 or RB3 based on his average when he was playing games this, um, this year. I mean, I think it's just the sheer volume that this man gets in this offense. We saw what Mike Davis was able to do. Mike Davis looking at his stats, 642 yards. Uh, was able to bring in uh, six touchdowns, but he also made a huge work himself in the passing game um, in terms of receiving. Can I see these stats? Sorry, no. one second. No, he's chilling. Uh, pulling up the stats. But no, I mean, just going off that, Mike Davis was able to have a phenomenal season, 373 receiving yards and two touchdowns as well. Um I just expect CMC in this offense. I think Matt Rule's going to be able to tap into this guy and make him, you know, an all-pro running back again. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Jose? Yeah, I mean, I had Mr. 2,000 yards himself, Derrick Henry. Um, I feel like he's gotten better every single year since his breakout. And uh, that, that kind of next gear that he's going to kick into, um, you know, he just has to evolve as a receiver. Because um, this year, dude only put up 100 receiving yards and no touchdowns and still finished as a uh, RB3. So, I mean, I'm not saying he has to be Camara or anything, but if this dude can put up 300 yards and three touchdowns, plus his rushing upside, um, you know, I think he's in for that RB1 campaign, you know, potential MVP type season. They probably He probably won't win it, but, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. And it's crazy with Henry because he barely, like, gets any – uh, receiving work, but that it's just yeah. he's still so good. And like, I think team. we got to see if Corey Davis stays. I know Corey Davis is a pending free agent. If he doesn't stay, it's literally AJ Brown, Johnny Smith, and Derrick Henry. And Johnny Smith yeah. didn't play a lot this year, so you're expecting they might. I think screen passes is literally all this guy needs to catch. If he can just you know catch a screen pass, you know yeah, run a couple it. yards, he has an ability to get the ball out of the catch. I mean. I mean, not – we haven't seen him do it, but, I mean, he can easily catch a ball behind the line, have his amazing offensive line block for him, and, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, once he gets going, big... he is hard to stop, bro. Like, yeah. Like, just have him go underneath, under the middle when the play breaks down. Big old dude, just dump it down. Like, yeah, really it's easy. As a, as a player. That's all I love to see from Cook, too. And Cook, I think, is, like, low-key, like, even faster, like – off the jump, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah, because you got to play the threat of Justin Jefferson deep. You got to play Adam Thielen, you know, kind of working in the middle of the field. So, I mean, yeah. people will be focusing on that. Cooks be able to slip off and get those linebackers. He's faster than, you know, most linebackers you find in the league. So, he'll be able to slip past them easy. Yeah, yeah well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to go into year number two. You have uh, you have Cook at two. So, you, you, you started in a little bit. So, uh, you got any other thoughts about why you have Cook at two? Yeah, I mean, he let, he was second in the league in rushing, second tied for second in touchdowns as well uh, in rushing. I just think, you know, this guy, if they were able to – they need to get one more offensive lineman. That O-line, you know, it's been working. They've been trying to get it good these last couple of years. And I think 
the, sh- the people that got to pay attention to Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson's still going to go over a thousand yards. We'll get into that when we get into our top 10 wide receivers uh, next week. But I think Dalvin Cook just has so much upside. The only thing I'm worried about is his health. And we also got to pay attention. He only played 14 games this year because uh, I know he might have took the last two or at least the last one off because of the death of his uh, father. Uh, may mm-hmm. he rest in peace. But um, I mean, playing two minus two games – and he still had 1,500 yards and 16 touchdowns. Unbelievable. I mean, it's going to be hard to keep that, you know, pace up. But, I, I mean, Dalvin Cook showed that he's a dynamic back in his league. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who's put up 14 games a season, uh, two seasons in a row now. Um, so, I think, you know, that's pretty much what we can expect. You know, he's going to have those, like, knick-knack type of injuries, a couple, like, game-time decisions. Um, but I think overall, you know, he's, he's managed to stay pretty healthy, keep his body right. Um, you know, and he's obviously probably one of the most consistent and uh, reliable backs from week to week, despite any matchup. That's why I got on my notes. Consistent option. Yeah, definitely. And like, I mean, like you guys said, he still hasn't even put up like a full year campaign. So like, you know, imagine like, you know, what he does, but you know, with those extra games, it's just like, oof. Yeah. All right. So Liam, Liam had CMC at one and Cook. Look at two, uh, Jose, you had Henry one and CMC at two. Is there anything else you want to add about CMC and why you have him at um, I mean, number my two? Because I have him at two as well. Uh, my biggest question for CMC was just, um, you know, will they hold him back because of, like, health reasons, you know, kind of just, like, ease him into the season um, and, you know, just kind of let him settle in, get back to where he was, or will they just, you know, let him fly, let CMC be CMC? Because when he is healthy, I think he's the most – valuable and versatile you know offensive back in the league um you know there's really no one that can do it all like McCaffrey can do it you know goal line third down um you know can do it all but um I mean I think McCaffrey and Cook pretty interchangeable you know you can really can't go wrong with either it just comes down to who can stay healthy at this point yeah definitely um another like couple like bullet points on why I I had CMC at two uh, just year two in like Matt Rule's system, uh, just another year to get that offense, um, you know, just clicking, uh, you know, another, you know, full off season to recover and get healthy. Uh, you know, Teddy's going to be more comfortable in the system. So that's what I really like as well. And I, I just like, I'm like in on Matt Rule. I, I like, I thought, you know, technically they're still like kind of a bad team last year, but I think they're like pretty frisky and they're young as well. Uh, so I think this year it's a, going to be a kind of a turnaround for them for sure especially because you know they're getting their star running back back but uh for for me at number three uh you know Jose already talked about a little bit I I have Derrick Henry there's not really much else to say I mean it's King Henry like you know he's been doing this for you know the last couple seasons now he's just he's a monster and he is like that team like like they go as far as he goes like he's like the MVP of that team he's their best player um and yeah it's really not much else to say with him so yeah I got Henry at three uh Liam you have Kamara at three uh, what do you have to say about your ranking for him yeah so I mean none of us have tackled Kamara yet I mean the one thing that really worries me is uh you know I know Drew Brees hasn't officially come out and retired yet which is kind of concerning I mean I know he took a huge pay cut I think he's down his his cap it went from 25 million to I think the vet the veteran minimum but Drew Brees is kind of the reason why he's had a lot of success in New Orleans for the main part that, you know, Drew Brees does, you know, as much as we call him check down King, that's what kind of makes Kamara a good player. He's able to get those screens. He has that volume, but I think regardless, you know, he, he's got that dual threat ability second to Christian McCaffrey. Um, He'll get his volume, but it's interesting to see, will Mike Thomas be able to form back to his usual self? Because with Mike Thomas succeeding as he is, it's going to be hard for Kamara. And, you know, it was hard for me to be impressed with Kamara's, Kamara's, you know, volume of receptions when Drew Brees wasn't there. You know, I know a couple of games in the stretch that Drew Brees was not playing for them uh, versus Denver, you know, the Kentel Hinton game, he had one reception. Uh, Their win against Atlanta, he had one reception. Uh, Just kind of going on a lot of games. I know the Philadelphia game, okay, he had seven receptions, but still like two, one, zero. You know, Taysom Hill can be, you know, not the most trustworthy quarterback when it comes to throwing these check down passes to Kamara or throwing those screen passes. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Jameis Winston does start, it's going to change his production, but I think Kamara is still a safe bet. He showed that he can be a rushing force, you know, obviously with those, that huge six TD game at the end of the year. So. Yeah, yeah definitely. 
Um, Jose, you have Dalvin Cook at three. I know we already talked about him, but is there anything else you, you kind of want to add um, on the Cook? Um, no, I mean, just like pretty much what I said earlier, he's just always a consistent option. I mean, this guy never put up less than 10 points in every game that he played. So, yeah, but I wanted to touch on what you said right there about uh, AK. Um, you know, his touchdown total on the season was really boosted by that. That um, I think it was on Thanksgiving or was it on Christmas? It was uh, Christmas Day. Yeah, Christmas, uh, where he had like six touchdowns. Um, but I mean, he finished as RB1 without even rushing for a thousand yards. I think, you know, there's inevitable regression there, especially without a, uh, you know, a consistent QB. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, Hill or Winston. Either way, I think, you know, his, his production's got to go down. But, you know, what's, what's his floor without Breeze? Yeah, exactly. I'm just worried about the, the QB because obviously, like, when, it was Hill. I mean, he, you know, his numbers were pretty pedestrian from what he had been yeah. putting up with Breeze. So I, just, I'm just worried about that. Just to throw it in there, uh, I figured out the game stretch between when Drew Breeze wasn't playing. So it was about, I think, four games or so. Uh, the Philly game, he had seven receptions. That was only uh, seven receptions on 10 targets for 44 yards. Then he had two receptions for nine yards, one reception with two targets for negative two yards, and then zero receptions on one target. So you know, not the greatest volume compared to when Drew Brees was there. Nine receptions, eight receptions, eight receptions, 13 receptions, nine receptions, five receptions, so on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't know. I just like that QB uncertainty. But he's still so – he's still so good. And he's still like a huge – because really like besides him and Thomas, I mean, yeah, you have Sanders and like, you know, some other like solid weapons. But those two are like get the bulk of, of the production, you know, when they're both healthy, so – like Definitely. Still, you know, Kamara is still a great, great option. And he really, like, shouldn't, like, fall past, like, five. It's kind of crazy how, like, he, like, was the, you know, number one guy. And he's probably not – he's probably not going to get drafted as, like, the number one guy, I feel like. Mm-hmm. He won't be. It's going to be CMC. I, yeah. I think it can be the, the – at least – I don't think he met – I mean, like, I think he's going to be the best. But he's, he'll be drafted number one regardless of what we think. Probably. Yeah. So finally, our, our first uh, new addition, uh, I, I had Kamara at four. I mean, we basically already explained it. And then uh, Liam has Derrick Henry at four. We already kind of touched on him. Jose, you have Nick Chubb at four. The first the first sighting of Nick Chubb on any of our lists, uh, you have him at four. Uh, what was going through your head when you put uh, Chubb at four th- for your ranking? Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that I think is going to be the best value. Um, definitely, I think, could, could finish as top five but will not be drafted as top five because of uh, Kareem Hunt's presence. I mean, these are two guys that finished at number 10 and number 11. So um, I think this team is just so run heavy that it really doesn't matter that Kareem Hunt is there. And he only played 12 games and rushed for 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns and still almost finished as uh, top 10. I mean, he finished as RB11. So, you know, give him a full season of work, um, you know, give him more chemistry with Stefanski. And I think he finishes as top five for sure. Yeah, no, he, he's got, like, the highest, like, floor in my eyes just because, like, that system is so uh, so perfect for him. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, Hunt worries you a little bit. But I don't think he, like – like, they both, like, kind of get theirs. And it's kind of clear that, like, Chubb's, like, the number one guy over Hunt. But, like, Hunt still kind of steals, like, the receiving production and stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll get into it later when I dabble with uh, him on my list. But he finished fourth among uh, yards per carry. Uh, the people above him were J.K. Dobbins with 6.0, who, you know, had a lot of big carries in that Ravens offense. And then Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson, who are quarterbacks, who run a totally different style. So 5.6 yards per carry is absolutely ridiculous. And I, I really like Chubb as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to go into my five. Uh, I think I have Saquon the highest out of – yeah, Saquon the highest out of us three. Um, the reason I just put – I like – I'm kind of falling in love with that, like, comeback story, like the fact that, like – uh, Adrian Peterson's like gonna help him out, like uh, you know, recovering from his ACL. I don't know. I'm just all in on that. And also, like I think uh, the Giants' like identity last you know last season became like they just you know play you know really hard on defense, and they are very like run heavy. I mean, like you know when Gallman was in there, even he was like you know putting up like solid numbers. So I just imagine that type of scheme, a run heavy scheme, but with Saquon, who's you know it's Saquon. He's super talented. Um, and, you know, adds, like, you know, way more, uh, you know, elusiveness and way more options than Gallman does. And I think, uh, 
you know, hopefully gets a full, you know, he's had time to get that full recovery and then uh, he'll be ready to go. And I think it just kind of unlocks that offense because that offense desperately needed something. They were like, I think probably like last or second to last and just like overall offense uh, last season, Saquon, like they need him desperately. Like he, I think um, best case scenario, like he's like their whole offense and gets like, you know, massive workload. He gets catched out the backfield because, you know, Danny Dimes, you know, he's kind of shown, you know, is, is he really the guy? Not sure, but what's going to help is going to, you know, being able to dump it off to Saquon and let him and let him work. So that, that's why I had Saquon at five. And I, I just, I feel like I'm definitely super high on him, but I think like, uh, you know, the ceiling is super, super high for him. Yeah. I mean, my, he's later down my list, but I still think he's going to be a solid pickup. Uh, I think, yeah, like you said, if these giant, if he comes back healthy, it's going to be, you know, the Giants might be a favorite to win this FC East, you know, Jose, as much as the Cowboys. But you got to look at it. Joe Judge, I mean, Joe Judge is a better coach than Mike McCarthy, in my opinion. I've seen a lot of him from that defense this year. Um, it's going to give me the they Brian play Flores. hard for Judge. Like, they're, like, all in. Like, the players, like, are all it's in. It's like a Brian Flores sort of vibe that I'm getting from Joe Judge, you know. Special team coach, became coach in uh, New York, you know, saw a lot of flashes from the end of the year. It's really going to be dependent on Daniel, Daniel Dimes, Danny Dimes, you know. He's not, you know, he's by far the greatest quarter. Not, I mean, he's by far not the greatest quarterback in that division, and you know, he's gonna need help from his uh, targets around him, and most importantly, Barkley. Yeah, and I mean, I feel yeah, like the team is so unlucky with drafting offensive players. Just like, I mean, you've had Ingram who gets hurt like every season. You know, Shepard gets hurt every season, and now you know if Barkley's gonna be like this, it's just ah. Uh, because so, yeah. on on paper, like I mean, you think about like Shepard, Ingram, uh, Barkley. Who's their um, Slayton? Their other Slayton. yeah, Slayton. Like that's like a really like on paper, like those guys, like that's a solid. Like those are good weapons, but it's just like yeah, they can never uh, be on the field at the same time. It's sad. Yeah. Okay, so Liam, we have a uh, you're the first one to have Aaron Jones on their list, so I wanted to get to you and see why you had a uh, Aaron Jones, which is like. He's like an interesting case because, yeah, he's a free agent and we still don't know. Um, I think it's like pretty clear like he probably won't end up in Green Bay. I mean, like because they already have some pretty solid running back options that they can use for cheaper. Um, so I'm assuming he's going to, you know, join another team. So uh, that like, you know, wherever he lands, that's going to definitely you know, move him up or down. Um, but you have him at five. So I want to like. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, we've seen amazing production from this guy the last couple of years. Uh, I think he was a he led the touchdowns in 2019 or 2018. Um, no, just, I think it's really de- he's a really big question mark for me because I think this is probably his ceiling. I think his floor is like 14 or something like that. It really depends on where he goes. Um, if he stays in Green Bay, I go as far as taking him off my list. But if he found his way to another team, this kid's gonna shine. Like, like I said, it wasn't too long ago where he led the league with 16 rushing TDs. He's a three-down back that is amazing, uh, has been playing alongside one of the greatest quarterbacks who, you know, limits his production because Aaron Rodgers is an amazing thrower of the ball. My ideal fantasy spot for him would be, you know, Buffalo or the Steelers. Uh, you know, as good as James Conner has been in the past, I think it's time for them to move on. They need some new players. But, I mean, I don't think he's going to return back to Green Bay if I were to, like, bet my money on it right now. I think, you know, when they threw A.J. Yeah. Dillon out there, they're able to see a lot of good production from Dylan. And I think that means, you know, with Dylan had a, I think he had like a hundred plus yard, two touchdown game. I think that's all they need to see from Dylan to know that he's going to be the back in the future. And I mean, the way people view backs, you know, in the NFL, they're really replaceable. But I think this Aaron Jones kid's is special, you know, getting behind a good O-line, you know, like the Steelers or like the Bills who've been growing the offensive line out there. And I think this kid's got uh, the ability to be a thousand yard rusher uh, multiple touchdown score. Yeah, I second all that. Jose, you didn't even have him on your list, so I want to see like why why yeah. you didn't include Jones. Um, yeah, I had him kind of like just outside my top ten. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It's really just like I. It was hard for me to put him anywhere inside, like over any of these guys, just because I really don't know where he's gonna be playing football. Um, mm-hmm. you know, let's say he ends up, you know, back on like the Jets or something. Or, like, he ends up on some, like, garbage offense with, like, no line or something. Like, I really just don't know. Um, but he's, he's definitely an elite, you know, elite running back. I'm pretty sure he's finished top five in, like, the last two seasons. Yeah. Um, and Not he was a lot, more, a lot more consistent this year than he was last year. 
you know, obviously last year he would have like those 40 point bombs and then come back with like a six point game. Um, but this year he was a lot more consistent. I, I think he's a top, you know, talent um, in the league at running back. I just, I, I couldn't find a spot for him, you know, especially not knowing where he's going to play. I mean, yeah, looking at people. PPR wise, he had at least one reception in every single game this year, which is really good to see, uh, you know, at least two targets as well. So that's good volume for someone um, as a PPR running back. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see him go to a team where he can just get like unleashed. I think they're like the Steelers are like the Bills, like two teams that I think are kind of like a running back away from like being like a really great offense and being kind of like contenders in the like real contenders in the AFC. But, like, to see him go to, like, a team where it would just be him, like, that would be insane. And I think he could put up, like, monster numbers. Like, I was reading some article that say, like, Atlanta, like, would be in the hunt. Like, if he went to, like, Atlanta, Ooh. he'd just be, like, let, like, free Aaron Jones. They just let him loose, and he'd just be able to do whatever. Like, I mean, Arthur Smith does want himself a work belt, workhorse back, and I think Aaron Jones can fit the build. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Um, so, we all have Jonathan Taylor at number six. Like, that's pretty dope. We all have him at the same – same ranking. I'm going to start with Jose this time. Um, why do you have Taylor at six? Um, yeah, I mean, he finished at six this year, but, um, you know, I think he's set to have the biggest breakout season of anyone. You know, he had a really great end of season, um, you know, finished as a top 10 rusher. And, you know, he could be either the, the biggest, like, uh, breakout player or just be such a, like, a bust. Because we saw this season, you know, when he was given that opportunity, he kind of squandered it for a bit. And, you know, we saw guys come in like Naheem Hines and and uh, Jordan Wilkins. And, you know, he really didn't take, you know, take charge of that opportunity until he was pretty much about to be benched. Um, and this is a guy, you know, obviously coveted as one of the, the highest um, talented rookies coming out of this year's draft. So I think, you know, there's really no no excuse for this guy not to not to finish as a top running back next year. Um, I'm all in on him. I think I think he's going to do it. I really I really hope he does. But. You know, it's a great O-line. Uh, yeah, regardless of whoever's at QB, I think I think he's got it. What about Carson? you, Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. just take, taking a look yeah. at this, um, looking at his college stats, this guy was a beast. Unbelievable at Wisconsin. You know, definitely one of the best backs we've seen in football in a while. And I think he really went slept on, you know, because Clyde Edwards-Alaire went first over, I mean, went first amongst the running backs in that draft. I mean, basically 2,000 yards every year, at least 13 touchdowns. Uh, his junior season had 2,000 yards and 26 touchdowns, which is unbelievable. Well, then looking at his NFL production, like Jose said, at a really hot end of the week, I mean, end of the year. Since week 13, he had a touchdown in every single game and even in the playoffs. Um, and since week 12, he's had at least 74 yards. From scrimmage, I mean, not to, yeah, at least 74 yards from scrimmage, which is just absolutely insane. I think this offensive line, they've been, they finally found a back that's going to work with them. Uh, it will be interesting to see in a fantasy aspect where Marlon Mack goes. I know Marlon Mack's not going to be high on our list, but he might sneak into a team probably like the Jets, you know, maybe the Steelers yeah. or like the Bills that like they don't end up in the Aaron Jones sweepstakes and might go for this guy. But um, I had my notes that they landed Stafford, but obviously they aren't landing Stafford. Uh, they'll probably get. You know, if luck comes back, oh my God, I'll actually go crazy. I know there's been some rumors about him coming back, some but um, rumors, yeah, some rumors. But you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Hines holds him back, like uh, Jose was saying, because uh, that really holds the ceiling away from being a great pass catching back. But um, yeah, I mean, I just wish the best for this guy. He's definitely be showing that. If he falls to me, I might have to take him in the first round. Yeah, I mean, he's got kind of like that Derrick Henry potential where he might not get. Um, you know, might not get a lot of catches out of the backfield, but they just, you know, so many, so much volume in the O line is so great that I think, you know, kind of makes up for it. Um, I had Aaron Jones at seven. I mean, we already kind of talked about him. I mean, he's like a, a 40 bomb waiting to happen, but, you know, it just kind of depends on the team. Um, Liam, you had Shrub at seven. We already kind of talked about him a little bit as well. Uh, Jose, you had Zeke. And I know, I know you're a big Cowboys fan, so I get it, but. Like the rest of the, we want to know, like why, why hear Zeke? Out. Hear me out. I made a case. All right, all right. Let's hear it, brother. I mean, I don't understand how y'all could keep him out the top ten. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, give him a healthy old line and give him a healthy Dak Prescott. This guy's top five potential every single season. 
Um, you know, he had a great start to the season. I know you know that, Carson, because you had him. Um, yeah, he was nice. It but then five, went out. Yeah, it wasn't until week five when we saw him kind of decline. But um, uh, I, I think he finished the season solid. You know, we saw TP kind of break out, Tony Pollard. You know, but, you know, don't forget, Zeke is the man they pay, you know, just a season ago. You know, and he's never gotten hurt. This man does not get hurt. Um, he's never rushed under nine, 980 yards. And he's rushed for over 1,300 in three of five seasons. You know, he would be conversations for, like, best all time if he didn't miss uh, six games from suspension. Um, you know, if, if he were to finish that season out, he probably would have rushed for, like, 13, 1,400 yards. You know, and if Dak doesn't go down this year, he probably would have done the same. Um, and he still finished in the top 10 this year, despite, you know, his struggles throughout the season. I think, um, you know, as they kind of ease Dak Prescott back in the offense, we're going to see run heavy. You know, we're going to see a lot of him, but also a lot of uh, Tony Pollard. But for sure, um, Zeke's going to be getting those goal line carries, no like, no doubt. Um, I just don't see how you can have him in top 10. I put him at oh, yeah. seven, like moderate, but. It's just the concern when it comes to Tony Pollard that made me hold him off my list. I just think, you know, it might, if they become a split backfield, it's hard for me to see Zeke. I mean, I think he'll still finish easily top 12, but he's definitely on the brink of that list. But it was just hard for me to see the way Tony Pollard was so electric in that offense the last couple of weeks. I think, I mean, if Tony Pollard is what's going to get them to win games, they might have to, you know, ease the brakes on Zeke a little bit. But then again, Looking at the game to be going against myself, he finished fifth in attempts in the league, and he is a workhorse back. He, you know, he gets twenty, like he gets at least like fifteen carries a game, so he's trying to make something out of it, and he'll be a goal line back regardless. Yeah, I mean, I mean Zeke, he, he just felt like outside. Uh, sorry, Jose, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, he like fell right outside my top ten. I mean, like all the points you made were like super valid. Honestly, like, like. I think a lot of it's just like fatigue and like because it was, you know, he was getting drafted as like a top four guy and, you know, kind of disappointed pretty bad in the, the middle of the season. But I just, I don't know. I just think like the Cowboys, like their O line's terrible. Also, like Pollard, like you said, Liam Pollard coming in there. And I think like with Dak, they're going to be playing from behind. And I feel like they're just like a pass, like first team. Like that's their identity. They got three, like, you know, I would say like elite receivers. And I think that's really like more of their identity than, uh, in like the run game anymore but he's still going to be a solid option and you're probably going to get him at a discount I mean he probably won't be putting up the same you know crazy numbers he was putting up the last few seasons but I think you know still like with his it'll be a second round back yeah 100%. which is like a pretty good deal for you know someone like Zeke who's been you know really great the last few years yeah I think he could slip his fall as top as low as top of the third and if he's at top of the third you take him yeah, yeah definitely I'd be hyped to get him I know at like that at that spot as a as I've followed the Cowboys for most of my life, they're pretty stubborn to just like go with a new guy like that. You know, I mean, this guy's proven it year in and year out. They're not just gonna switch to Tony Pollard, you know, all of a sudden. Um, not switch, but just give stuff. them like more and more work, though. Oh yeah, but especially when they've invested money in Zeke, he's kind of like you know the face of the team. I really do not see them, um, you know. Kind of even like I don't see it going as far as even a 50-50 split. I think the most that we see yeah. is like 70 30. 70 30. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree with that for sure. It's just that he's a Tony Pollard's a change of pace back. I mean, yeah. you wouldn't say, I mean, Tony Pollard's definitely a faster, probably more elusive back. And then Zeke, you know, Zeke's still elusive and he's also, you know, more the power guy. But I mean, it's it is hard to look away from that he's fifth in the attempts. Um despite, you know, having a lesser workload towards the end. Yeah, that goal line work is going to be, like, really going to, like, I think, like, make or break the season this year for him because you, you know it's going to go to him, like, within the five, so. And for fantasy reasons, you hope that his fumbling, he can get his fumbling turned down. I mean, five fumbles was amongst <laughs> tops of running backs in the league, but, I mean, then again, Dalvin Cook had four and Derrick Henry had three, so. Uh, I think it was just unlucky. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had, like, what, like, two, like, in one game, I think. Like, he had, like, one really, like, terrible game. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on uh, to, like, our number eight spots. Uh, I'll start with Liam first this time. You have uh, James Robinson. Uh, I think you have – yeah, you have Robinson the highest at eight. Um, 
like just dive into that and like why because I'm I'm really excited for him as well. I mean he had a great season. It's gonna it's kind of gonna suck now that he's gonna actually be like drafted really high because it was just amazing that his top five running back like was just sitting there for everyone to take on the the waivers. It was incredible. But uh, yeah, why do you have Robinson at eight? Uh, he's a steal if he goes to eight, in my opinion. People keep I, people. I've been listening to all these people talk about fantasy football. He's gonna be a steal if he falls down to that. Six in the attempts. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1,070 yards rushing, 4.4 and a half yards per carry, um, seven touchdowns as well. I mean, I really love him. I hope Urban Meyer, you know, they've had a lot of good running backs in Ohio State history. You know, I think, don't get me wrong, I think Zeke was under him, and we obviously saw Zeke was one of the best college football backs we've seen in a while. Um, I do, you know, there's all these rumors, oh, maybe Trevor Lawrence doesn't go to Jacksonville. Uh, he should go to Jacksonville. Urban Meyer's stupid if he doesn't dra- want to draft Trevor Lawrence. I think yeah. he could get molded into that ETN role. Uh, you know, they're trying to adapt some stuff from Trevor Lawrence's offense to bring there. But, um, like, yeah, most of Lawrence's success came from ETN. So, I think if they see James Robinson even used in sort of a similar role with that volume, you know, the rush behind, you know, not a terrible offensive line. It's not the greatest on the tackle side, but pretty solid in the interior with uh, Brandon Linder and Andrew Norwell. But, um I think he could easily finish in the top three of fantasy next season. Uh, It's just whether or not Urban Meyer's offense is going to be geared towards, you know, getting enough rushing attempts for James Robinson. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I, what you said about Urban Meyer's and Trevor Lawrence, just the fact that he's, you know, going from, uh, you know, basically being like the main guy last year. And then now you're going to get Urban Myers, like one of the best college coaches of like recent history and Trevor Lawrence. Like you're getting those two guys next season, like super excited. And I love the fact you brought up ETN. Cause like, yeah, that was huge. Like for, for Trevor, like both of them uh, were super productive. It's just going to open up the field more for, uh, for Trevor going to make it easier mm-hmm. for him. Um, and I don't know, cause he's the best weapon they have. I mean, I like shark, but like, if you're Urban Meyer, it's like, all right, we have Trevor. Like, we want to, like, run a lot of the offense through Robinson because he was, like, the absolute best part of that team. Yeah, I think what Gosh. they kind of have to adapt, I mean, in a biased opinion, honestly, it's kind of like a 49er-style offense. Use LaVisca Chenault as that Debo Samuel sort of guy because he was a Swiss Army knife coming out of Colorado. That was the reason why he was drafted as high as he was. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, James Robinson's a much better back, in my opinion, than Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert's just fast. I think Dre Johnson can be a threat in that offense. And like you're saying, Chess ETN was able to tear up a ton of uh, defenses as, according, um, as well as Mike Keynes this season. So, ETN's a guy, like, I want to see where he gets drafted because, like, I, I like, I want all of ETN's stock because that, that dude's a beast. What if they take him? What if Jacksonville takes him? Huh. I don't want to punch Stupid. with them. Stupid. I mean, I don't know. Where is where do you think he's gonna fall? Would he be like a second round guy? Because I mean, he was really good. I think Najee. I mean, Najee Harris is also a beast too. He's like a Derrick Henry build that can catch the ball. Yeah, I want to see him go to like like he's to me like kind of like this year's like Taylor or like J.K. Dobbins. Like that's. I mean, like, who knows? Like, let's look at the list of running back teams uh, with running backs. I mean, is Kenyon Drake gonna stay in Arizona? He's an impending free agent. You know. New York's got to get a running back. I mean, the Jets, of course. Um, who knows? Tampa Bay could take a running back if it falls to him. I know they got after Keyshawn Vaughn, but I don't think he's the answer there. If they don't want to go with, you know, playoff Lenny, the man himself, or Rojo, they could definitely get a running back and just keep building on that offense like how the Chiefs did. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh's got to go for a guy. Um, mm-hmm. Buffalo's got to go for a guy. Houston's got to go for a guy. Um, Houston needs just, like, guys everywhere. Miami – Miami could even go for a guy despite having Gaskin. Um, yeah, Gaskin's like – he'd work better as like a change of pace guy, I feel like. You also got Salvon Ahmed, bro. Yeah, oh, Ahmed yeah. was nice. But no, yeah, there's tons of teams that might take him back. Yeah. Okay, so you had Robinson at eight. Uh, Jose, you had Saquon at eight. I know we uh, touched on him a little bit, but do you have anything else to add for Barkley? Yeah, I mean, it's just the injury concerns, but I think – He'll definitely be prepared to come back. Um, and if he falls past the second round, I think he's a steal. I mean, scoop him up instantly because this yep. man could either finish as RB1, you know, or like RB10. But um, definitely like one of the more consistent options, you know, even when the team is trash, this dude's going to get his, um, you know, and 
it's just one of the craziest athletes we've seen in the NFL in a long time. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have Eckler at eight, um, someone that I loved going in this season, but just, you know, got unlucky with injuries. Um, I just like love the fact that not only like just having a new coaching staff there. Cause I, I don't know. I just feel like, like Eckler showed, like, I mean, only a couple years ago, I think he was like RB four. Um, yeah. RB four. And, uh, I don't know. And then like at the start of the season, it was like, they, they wanted to like split carries with like Kelly. Like, I don't know. Like he, like, he's clearly like, he is the best like back, like both like pass catching running. He's the best back they have. I don't know why they don't just like fully commit with him, but I'm excited. He's going to get a full off season to recover. Uh, he ended the season pretty nicely. Um, and it's just going to be like the last piece to really like, you know, complete Herbert because to get that short passing game is only going to open up the, his beautiful deep ball, like even more. Um, and I'm just really excited for like an Eckler kind of like comeback year and like the Saints QB coach that's going to be their OC. So hopefully, you know, they can get that kind of breeze Kamara magic going uh, fantasy wise. Um, so that's why I've, I've Eckler at eight. Um, let's see. Uh, Jose, you have James, you have James Robinson at nine. Uh, I have <laughs> as well. You already kind of talked about him. Uh, Liam Gibson, nine. Explain. Someone I know you love Carson, a big pickup that you're able to trade Zeke. And I think you got yeah. Gibson and someone else. I don't remember who else you got. But, um, you know, as much as I believe in Gibson, I do have some concerns. Uh, I think Washington is going to find a way to get a star quarterback either the draft or via trade this offseason. Obviously, at this point, I mean, I know Russell Wilson rumors are going around, but I think Deshaun Watson's still up. Um, this team should go for him. But uh, hopefully, this doesn't limit Gibson, though. And if it does, it doesn't shouldn't be, he shouldn't go he should go crazy if it doesn't limit him during the thanksgiving game he flashes potential as a runner 11 touchdowns uh on the season before his he went down late in the season and then i think he came back uh made for the playoffs in the game before that but he wasn't really himself but i mean we haven't really seen a really good running back in washington for a while but i think this guy he's got the potential out there they're building a good interior offensive line hopefully or they'll keep brandon share for their star guard but um you know, alongside McLaurin, he's the second best offensive weapon on this team. So I think if they're able to utilize him in the white way, I really like Ron Rivera as a coach. I think we all do. At this point, he's, you know, he's shown perseverance as, not only as a character, but as a coach, be able to build this team into the playoffs. But, um, you know, only falling short just a couple of points versus the eventual Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Um, if Ron Rivera is able to tap into this guy, you know, maybe get him a little bit more pass catching. I know J.D. McKissick's been that role. You know, maybe just get Gibson like two or three, you know, targets a game. Um, he scares me next season. I think he'll definitely fall in the second round, and he's he going to be so naive. If I'm higher in the second round when it comes to our draft order, I'll definitely be targeting him to be my RP2. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Gibson, Gibson and McKissick, they kind of seem like like a Chubb and, uh, and Hunt light. Uh, just, <laughs> yes. Like, I mean, super light just because, I mean, Cleveland, they have like a – you know, run heavy scheme and then also like their O-line and everything I think is a lot better. But like, I think they kind of have like, like, cause McK McKissick, I think is still going to be like a solid, like, you know, kind of like flex, uh, you know, like first guy off the bench option with his receiving work. He's just a kind of a PPR guy, like a, like a James White kind of guy. But yeah, I'm really high on Gibson too. He just like just missed my top 10, but um, like, he, I don't know. He was, he's a beast. And especially like, you know, in that division, you're going to, get to play Dallas, you're going to get to play the Eagles. Uh, Giants defense is solid, but, you know, still they can do something about it. But, uh, yeah, like, I love Gibson. I'm super excited. And I want, I want to see where he gets drafted because, like, I mean, there's some hype around him, like, coming in last season. Like, you know, he showed, he showed out this year. So, I wonder where he's going to fall because, yeah, he's got top ten potential for sure. Yeah. Um, and then let's see. And then – All you have to Yeah. Um, Jose, you want to talk about Eckler and why you have him at 10? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't see why this guy can't put up similar uh, receiving numbers to, like, Alvin Kamara um, because I think he's, you know, probably one of the most talented pass catching backs for sure. And he's shown to have the chemistry with, with Herbert, probably his favorite target besides um, Keenan oh. Allen. So um, give him, you know, give him a healthy and a full season. Um, you know, he's going to be in there on third downs and – you know, when he came back last season, you know, from his injury, he put up more than double digits every single game. 
without even having over 15 rush attempts. Like this dude averaged 17 points per game. Uh, and he, I think he's probably just like the biggest um, kind of like most unique type of like he has the most unique role of any of these guys because he's not like a traditional like workhorse or like he's going to gets most of his value from like, you know, receiving touchdowns and like 11 targets or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Eckler, if, if he falls to like third round, I'm, I'm scooping him up. Oh, he's not falling that late, but uh, definitely could be someone that's on the radar. I can see him. I can see him falling for sure. Yeah, he could fall. Like, I mean, he already like. I mean, even like last season, he fell like in some of my drafts. He fell like late, like second round. He's just not like a, a sexy, a sexy option. I feel like, like fantasy option. Like, PPR like wise, season. he's just been crazy though. It's hard for me to stray away from. Him. He also got me a few wins last season. Um. Towards the end, yeah. He came back. Yeah. Okay, so that's our uh, – it's and then I have Chubb at 10. I mean, yeah. We I think company. I got a couple of sleeper picks. That yeah, let's get into, like, our honorable mentions, like sleepers. Like, yeah, Liam, you want to start? All right, so I'm going to read this guy's 2019 stats to you. I want you to guess who you think this is. So, played all 16 games, 278 rushing attempts, 1,137 yards, 4.1 yards of carry, five touchdowns. Uh, he also got 35 receptions, 287 yards, and three TDs. Any guess who this is? It's Joe Mixon. Mm. I really have some faith in this guy. I know he I mean he only played six games this year in kind of an uncharacteristic year, uh, his lowest yards per carry since his rookie season. Um, he's definitely my sleeper in my flex position. I think he's going to fall tremendous. His name hasn't been talked about at all. Uh, I know because he was drafted pretty high, I think maybe late second round this year. He's going to fall even more. I think. I took him in the first. You took him in the first? Mm -hmm. I took him like, I think I had last pick in first round. I took him like 10th. Yeah. But I think. Last year's draft? Mm -hmm. Dang. No, but I mean, he's only 24 years years old. He'll be 25 to start of next season. Um, I just have some faith in this kid. I think Joe Burrow, he needs that back to hand off to him, you know, to change the offense up. He can't throw 50 passes a game. Um, hopefully, uh, what's his name? Taylor. What's the coach's name? Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor can, you know, key in on this guy. They do need to get offensive linemen. Please draft Slater or Pranay Sewell. You're stupid. Do not draft Jamar Chase. I don't care if Jamar Chase is a super talented receiver. Draft a damn offensive lineman mm -hmm. and if so this guy's draft going three. up the top draft three <laughs> honestly just go all of your picks it doesn't matter just spend money in free agency on some defensive backs or something and then just go in on this guy and then also to finish off my list chris carson i think seattle's me going towards more of a run offense and regardless mm -hmm. he's always been good it's just his health has been a concern throughout his career and then Austin austin eckler's on my list as well uh zeke and then deandre swift is definitely someone I'm looking at for next season. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, my, big, my biggest sleepers was uh, Clyde. I mean, I think this this was this was one of the most hyped up guys last season, and he definitely dis like disappointed for what we were expecting. You know, I think everyone was expecting like Kareem Hunt type of numbers. You know, and I think he was pretty good. I mean, he was a rookie. Um, they kind of shied away from the run this year, but. I could definitely see him falling like low, low, especially after that Super Bowl. Um, and if, you know, the Chiefs, now they have a chip on their shoulder. Now they're going to come back, take the league by storm. You know, I definitely could see them incorporating Clyde a bit more. Um, and my other, you know, biggest sleeper was another Super Bowl guy, Leonard Fournette. I mean, this guy's only 26. Like, he's still in his prime. I don't know why people act like he's washed. Um, you know, he's, he's a potential Pro Bowl running back every year. He had a great Super Bowl. Um, you know, and he's, he's got potential for a thousand yard rushes every, you know, whenever he's the starter. So I don't see why, you know, he can't be that still. Carson to add. Um, yeah. I mean, I know you mentioned Swift. Swift was like a, a guy that I really liked just because, uh, just because of the coaching change. I mean, you're getting like Anthony Lynn, who's going to be the new OC, who's, uh, you know, former running back. He's a big run heavy guy. Um, Goff, you know, is going to be their QB. You know, he needs the run game to be good to 
you know, for him to be effective. Um, and just like the second year, you know, coming in that second year, I think, um, you know, if they use like any, if they still give AP carries or whatnot, I think that's just kind of ridiculous. Like Swift showed last year, like he is super talented. Um, it should be like the workhorse back. Um, Gibson, uh, Akers, I mean, um, with Goff, I like Akers a lot more. I think I like him a little less just because they have Stafford. They're going to probably be able to do some more stuff in the passing game. But Akers, like, showed a lot at the end of the season. I feel like he should be their guy. Uh, Kareem Hunt, Josh Jacobs, Dobbins uh, ended the season really well, and I like his potential. Um, and then I had, like, Miles Gaskin. Uh, it's like an honorable mention sleeper as well. But um, real quick, someone that finished uh, – you know, I think fourth this year, but didn't make any of our lists. And I don't, I have him as like a bust. Uh, we got to talk about Dave Montgomery real quick. And yeah. why, why, why not? Cause for me, it's just like, like, I don't know, like, yeah, he did great then the, the season, but I feel like it was just a product of like, you know, uh, switching QBs and then also like playing some bad run defenses. I don't know. I just like, it's just a bear. I just can't trust like their offense as a whole. Like, I, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. I mean, he did have a really, really good end to his season, but, you know, not really a big play threat. I mean, doesn't, you don't have to be a big play threat in fantasy. You only like five big plays according to ESPN's um, ranking. But, I mean, he just beat up on some bad run teams. He had a huge, like, set of games towards the end of the year, all like 22-plus fantasy points. Yeah, it was, uh, it was massive. It I mean, massive. let's look at the teams he played. Green Bay, terrible run defense. I mean, he didn't have the greatest game there, but still. Jacksonville, bad run defense. Uh, Derrick Henry owns that team. Minnesota, bad run defense. Houston, horrendous bad r- run defense. Detroit, uh, Green Bay again, terrible run defense. I mean, Tennessee is a not really a good defense at all. He had 30 rushing yards against them. Like, the beginning of the season, you know, not the greatest. Like, Indianapolis held them to 27. Tampa Bay held them to 29. Rams held them to 48. You know, Carolina held them to 58, which is actually kind of impressive given that they're pretty young defense. But still, uh, we don't think – he's not – and he got nine receptions versus the Packers. That's not going to ever happen again. Yeah. I mean, I think he's a good talent. Um, I think they really just need to center that offense more around, you know, a solid, complete run game. Because behind him, who do they really have that's, like, reliable – uh-huh. And Tariq Cohen's coming back. Yeah. If they can yeah, really true. get like a one two punch going, you know, something. You know, I, I don't see him in the top 10, but probably a solid, you know, flex option, decent guy. Bit match yeah. Bit. He might fall because everyone's hating on him. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it should be like, it should be kind of like his team. Like, they, they should just be like a run heavy well, uh, approach. Yeah. If Robinson leaves, I mean, if Robinson, Robinson, please leave because. My Roger Shaver rankings, he's very, very high on my list. Uh, very, very high, as in potentially in the top two. But um, for Dave Montgomery, if he does leave, it's going to be, a, like you said, a run-heavy offense. You know, just Tariq Cohen being the third down back, and then Dave Montgomery just pounding up the middle. Uh, that offensive line, though, is kind of bad, so um, they will need to improve that if Dave Montgomery is going to be good. But, I mean, if he slips to, like, the fourth, fifth round, he might have to consider picking him up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, like, he has, like, I mean, he showed it. He has, like, that RB1 upside. And I think that his, alone. Like, I mean, fourth and attempts is a consistent running back. Like, is he's going to get the volume. So, it's just if he hits it or not. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Kind of but the not Jonathan Taylor situation. With the what? It's kind of like the Jonathan Taylor situation. Like, he's, he's getting his work. He just got to make something of it. Yeah, I mean, I think Jonathan Taylor is just a way better back, more oh, dynamic. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But. Yeah, same. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, there you have it. That's our, our running back list. We'll be uh, back next week. We're going to do the wide receivers. That's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm really excited for that. And then uh, tight ends. And then, yeah, hopefully uh, by then, <laughs> hopefully by then the ESPN mock draft uh, lobby will be open. Hey. Oh, well, maybe have... we should do a – shoot, maybe we should do like a, a live mock draft. Like, um, hey, might have to take a look at the draft, the NFL draft. Might have to take a look at some basketball, boy. Yeah, basketball's been heat right now. Basketball and, oh, and when the rookies, w- rookies come out. Hey, De'Aaron Fox is on fire right now. I do, guys. So. so is Halliburton. 
Mm. Yeah, Dude, Halliburton talking. is nice. Those two together. Hey, I think all I got to see, right now. Draymond should have drawn that foul. SMH. God, that was cringe. Bro, you seen Draymond shoot that three? <laughs> That's so cringe. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, that wraps it up. Like I said, we'll be back next week for the wide receivers. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Peace.